Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to do something very different. We're not going to look at Sudoku, we're not going to look at a crossword. In fact, we're going to look at a puzzle that appeared in the recent Galactic Puzzle Hunt, which is an online puzzle hunt where teams across the world compete with one another to solve about 50 puzzles uh, that are gradually revealed to you uh, as you manage to correctly solve puzzles as you go along. So uh, on the first night, I think three puzzles were released. And as you solved those three puzzles, more puzzles would become available. And you could go on from there. But one of the later puzzles that was released was called Ministry of Word Searches. And uh, this was one of the best puzzles I have ever seen. Um, now, last year's Galactic Puzzle Hunt featured the hardest puzzle I have ever seen, and that was a puzzle called Venture by John Snyder. Uh, this puzzle was, um, it wasn't as difficult as that one, but it was, in its own way, incredibly, incredibly beautiful and brilliant. And I am going to attempt in this video to explain how it worked. Now, I am very conscious of the fact that I am likely to come a cropper in doing this because this is not a straightforward puzzle but I will try because I'd love for you guys to appreciate just what um, what we managed to oh, the joy we got I guess in in solving this unique puzzle so this is the sort of thing we were presented with when we first accessed the puzzle um, and you can see it's a Ministry of Word Searches. It says, welcome to the Ministry of Word Searches. Give me an idea and I can fetch the word search for you. Or refresh and I'll give you a random word search. And look, if you just type in random numbers at the bottom, different word searches appear. And you can, you know, there is an extraordinary number of these word searches. In fact, you can put in any number here up to a billion and it will throw back at you a word search. So this was already quite daunting. I have no intention, neither the rest of my teammates, of solving a billion different word searches. And indeed, when we studied these word searches, it was really hard to see quite what we were looking at for a long time. Um, and eventually, what we managed to do is we made a little bit of a breakthrough. And I'm going to use puzzle number 23 just to show you what we managed to notice. Now, if you study this grid, you might see uh, a couple of things that are interesting. Um, and where we need to start with, I think, in order to show you this, is let's have a look at row two. Now, if you look at row two, reversed in row two is the word Trudeau. And this was really a breakthrough because we, someone realised that Justin Trudeau was a famous person. He's the Canadian Prime Minister. So we started to think, well, could this puzzle possibly be about prime ministers in some way? And we did a bit of research and we noticed that Canadian prime ministers seemed to be making appearances in these word searches. They were quite often misprinted, but, you know, sometimes they weren't and they kept moving around depending on what number of word search we'd asked for. But definitely definitely they were in there. So let's go back to this, which one was it we were looking at? Was it this one? Yeah, puzzle number 23. So if we look down here, you can see Campbell appearing toroidally. He starts off here and goes down and then he pops back up at the top. And if we look at the bottom row, reversed, there's almost Diefenbaker, who is a, an old Canadian Prime Minister, but his E is misprinted. And there are two things that we realised eventually by typing in lots and lots of different numbers to study these word searches. The first is that the Canadian Prime Ministers that were appearing corresponded with prime numbers. So Justin Trudeau is in fact the 23rd Canadian Prime Minister. And all of the Prime Ministers that made appearances were, were the 2nd, the 3rd, the 5th, the 11th, the 13th, 17th, 19th and 23rd Prime Ministers. So they were genuinely prime, well, prime numbered Prime Ministers. And the second thing we noticed was that Justin Trudeau was never misprinted. 
and it turned out that there was a rule going on whereby where prime ministers were appearing, later prime ministers would take precedence over earlier prime ministers. Now, you may think this is already a little bit strange, but it's about to get a lot stranger. What we then had to work out was really difficult, and I'm going to show you a spreadsheet to show you what I'm talking about. Now, I think it was Alexander Mackenzie. He was the second Prime Minister of Canada, and it turned out that he appeared in the grid very often misprinted because, of course, uh, he is he could always be trumped by any later Prime Minister who overlapped with his position, but he could only appear in two positions in the grid. Abbott, the third Prime Minister, only ever appeared in these three positions, again, often misprinted, and so on and so forth. So depending on, it turned out, depending on the number of the word search that you typed in, and the remainder, when that number was divided by the number of the Prime Minister, these Prime Ministers flicked positions. So in fact, each word search corresponded to a very precise arrangement of these Canadian Prime Ministers. And that, in and of itself, was daunting and strange. The next thing that we noticed, and I'm going to show you this word search to illustrate it, is that hidden amongst the Canadian Prime Ministers, there seemed to be a message. And now this, this, this puzzle number here, we never found this puzzle number, but in fact, this reveals the entire message. Because by plotting the Canadian Prime Ministers in positions where they overlapped to the maximum extent, obviously more letters were freed up to spell out the message that you can sort of work out if you read along the lines here. So let's go through it and see what this message is. Great work. Your first clue is the answer holds, and this is nine letters. OK, you must now isolate the unique valid word search exclamation mark. Now, we only got some of that message. We got it down to about unique word and guessed that the end of it was probably search. And therefore, we had to think about what that meant. What does it mean that we had to isolate the unique valid word search? And how was that going to give us a nine letter answer? Well, this took some thinking about. And I do recommend you pause the video, even go to the Galactic Puzzle Hunt website, play around with these um, uh, these word searches and see if you can think what it might mean. Well, what it meant was incredibly daunting. It meant that we had to arrange all of these prime ministers in such a way that they created a word search where none of them overlapped with one, one another and where none of them used the toroidal property. So you can see here Laurier in when the remainder was one, when Laurier's prime minister number divided the word search, would appear like this. So he'd start here and pop off the edge of the grid and come back the other side. Well, we decided that that probably wasn't going to be a valid word search because you don't see any word searches in the newspaper that allow, you know, the names to spin round the edges. Now, it still took us ages to come up with a word search that was valid. And bear in mind also that that word search had to be a number less than a billion. So how did we go about doing it? Well, we started with some of the longer named prime ministers and we plotted them. So Mackenzie, for example, like this, and Diefenbaker, you saw, saw um, in one of the other pictures. I think we put him either along the bottom or along the top. And then we started to build up from there. Now, what that meant was eventually we did create such a word search that had no overlapping prime ministers. And this is really amazing now. That word search actually corresponded to a unique number. Because if you think about it, what we're doing is we're placing these prime ministers in very special places in the grid, such that when you divide a number um, by the 
the prime number number of the prime minister, you're getting a very particular remainder. So for example, for Mackenzie, if we, uh, if we positioned Mackenzie down the third column like this, we knew that the number must be even because there must be no remainder when, uh, when the word search number we were after was divided by two. Similarly, if we then decided that Abbott was going to appear in this position, we would be looking for a word search where when we divided that word search number by three, there would be a one remainder, etc., etc. Now this gets quite complicated, as you as you can imagine, for some of the larger numbered um, prime ministers. But in the end, in the end, we actually worked out a unique way of arranging prime ministers, and therefore we had to think about how would we work out what number word search that corresponded to. Well, we needed to use something called the Chinese remainder theorem to do that, uh, which we did because um, you know, we're not all absolutely geniuses at number theory. And it turned out that corresponded to this, this numbered word search, 63,888,718. So we typed it in with bated breath and were presented with this word search. And we thought, oh, this is great. We're going to get the nine letter answer from this. Well, not quite. It turned out that there was rather a lot more work to do. It didn't take us that long to spot something interesting about this word search. And if you have a look along the leading diagonal, you'll see that it seems to spell something. It spells Graham's N-O-I-D. Now, when I first saw this, uh, I'm not a number theorist. Uh, my knowledge of higher level mathematics is not the best. I thought perhaps there was another Canadian Prime Minister um, and we could go and look up his number. Perhaps that would have nine letters and that would be the answer. No, it wasn't that straightforward. It turned out, in fact, there is a number called Graham's number. And I know a lot of you will be shouting at the screen saying, how can you possibly be this ignorant, Simon? Well, I'm sorry, I am. So this is the Wikipedia page about Graham's number. Graham's number turns out to be a rather large number, a number so large that we can't even, you know, you couldn't even represent it. You know, it's sort of more, more atoms than there are in the universe by a gajillion. Um, and it's called a a number tower. So it's basically three to the power of a lot of other threes, where you keep going with that chain of that towering number of threes for a very long time. Here we go here, three to three to three to three, to three et cetera, et cetera. So then what could this mean? How could we find Graham's numbers ID? And then one of our team, Neil Talbot, realized what it meant we needed to work out the number of the word search that corresponded to Graham's number, i.e. when we divided Graham's number by all of these different prime numbers corresponding to the prime ministers, what would the remainder be? Now, this is a quite incredible thing, to me anyway, because Graham's number doesn't exist in any meaningful way. You can't write it down. You'd be writing from here until, you know, uh, or for forever, basically, writing down. This, this algorithm here has produced the last 500 digits of Graham's number. And uh, there are a great many digits to Graham's number. So how on earth could we work out the remainders when Graham's number, for example, was divided by 19? Well, it turns out with a lot of thought, you can actually do this. And it's really, the mathematics involved is really rather beautiful. I'm not gonna go through it today, but it is sort of understandable if you've done A-level maths or you know, SAT maths in the, in the US. I think you could get your head around how to calculate these remainders. I mean, in a very simple way, obviously if a number is three to the power of three, for example, you know that three to the power of anything is always going to be an odd number. So that rules out half of the word searches that we could possibly be looking at. Um, but we did some maths and we worked out that in fact Graham's number did have a unique ID. However, that number 
is way bigger than a billion. So we couldn't just type this into our um, into the machine here and get what this word search looked like. We were going to have to actually recreate the word search for ourselves. So knowing obviously what these remainders needed to be, we therefore knew exactly which positions all of these prime ministers needed to be in. We know the rule that later prime ministers trump earlier prime ministers in terms of position and we knew the message that we had to fill into the resultant gaps. So unbelievably we could calculate the word search that corresponded uniquely to Graham's number. Now this to me was mind-boggling. We were doing this at 3 a.m. I had work the next day but I was not going to stop figuring out what the the end of this puzzle was and it was you know it was really fascinating so let me just show you where we got to we calculated the final word search here it is on the screen and if we look down the lead diagonal again we get leader of USA and we thought thought about that for a minute and worked out that a nine letter answer to that could be president which turns out to be correct now I have tried to explain this puzzle I've probably done a terrible job of it and I really really recommend those of you who uh, are fascinated or want to understand more do go to the Galactic Puzzle Hunt website I'll put the links in uh, under the video here have a look at the puzzle have a look at the solution have a look at the maths involved in the solution and just think about what went into creating this. It is a work of sublime genius. And that's why I wanted to share it with you. So I hope that you got something out of hearing me waffle about it. And if you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. We really appreciate it. Um, and we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic, probably be on something rather simpler next time.